Bone and Pecos got everything his own way around here, ain't he? Yeah, and if we don't get those horses, the train's going to be in trouble. Well, maybe we'll just have to pay him his $40. But you only get 25 head and half of them stabbing to death, don't you believe it? Well, suppose we don't get the horses. Nothing says we can't have a drink, either. Come on. Hey, Charlie, we got things to do. Admit Bill. Maybe the bartender knows where we can get some horses. I once knew a bartender with a horse drink. Come on. Charlie? Yeah. Oh. What's it? That's fine, huh? City clothes off, white clay marker across there. Running Crick eight years ago. Remember, Charlie? Well, I remember the day we tied up with that cavalry patrol chasing down them mutes. That's the day you all tied that young. Is he the one? Yeah. You tried to lift my scalp. You were just a young kid. You remember? I remember. You turned me over to the cavalry. Looks like they did a pretty good job with it. You think so? Kind of dutified. I remember the day Bill brought you in, screaming and scratching. What'd they do to you, boy? Try to make a preacher out of you? A white preacher? What was your name, Mark? John Turnbull is the name they gave me when they tried to civilize me. What are you doing here in Pueblo? The youth were in Pueblo before there was a Pueblo. I'm a lawyer. An Indian lawyer? Is there anything wrong with that? No, nope. I've just never heard of any Indian lawyers before. That's a pretty tough road to hoe, isn't it? You did me a favor today, I'm grateful. If I can pay you back, I will. But it's not going any further than that. You don't like this, do you? No. Why? Look in the mirror. Have you looked in the mirror lately? I'd look more out of place in New York than you would. I'm a Ute Indian. I don't want to be anything else. I wear these clothes because lawyers dress this way. They took away my buckskin and put me in broadcloth, but it doesn't go any deeper than my Indian hide. And that's one thing that even Columbia University can't change. That's a pretty high-flying education. 
for an Indian. I didn't say that. You said that you'd repay the favor if you could. That's what I said. We need horses. See, T.J. Fingal. We saw him. How's business, Mr. Lawyer? How many horses? Fifty. Good ones. Twenty dollars a head. That's a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Maybe you'd like to meet my partner. Maybe we can talk about those horses. See you later, Charlie. Yeah. It's a lot of horses. We need $800 to get this thing into court. The tribe has no money. I've told you a hundred times. But we've got horses. You'd have always had good horses. A little small. But strong. They'll get you where you want to go. Mr. Hawks, perhaps you would like to know what this is all about. The Utes have 50,000 acres across the river by federal treaty in perpetuity. A lot of people have their eyes on it, especially Mr. Fingal and his partner. It's a federal treaty. What's the problem? You haven't met the Judge Burkhardt or the town council, huh? I've met nobody but Fingal and a bunch of high-priced horses. John here. The Pueblo has a new ordinance. 50% of all lands owned in common must be cultivated. Across the river, that is. That's hard to believe. It's the law. It's nothing but rocks and mountains. Couldn't cultivate it if you wanted to. And we don't want to. My people aren't farmers, they're hunters. We've always settled disputes the simple way, and we've always lost. So Johnny became a lawyer. We can't beat you people with guns. You've got too many of them. But I'm going to turn your own laws against you. If your precious constitution means what it says. It usually does. But not for Indians. $800 in phony court costs. You call that constitutional? I called it Mr. Fingal and Judge Burkhardt. I didn't come here to get mixed up in your local arguments, Mr. Solomon. But if the Utes have a federal land grant, you can't beat it. Not if we can ever get it to court. But I can't go into court. You what? Well, that's a strange interpretation of the law. You see, here in Colorado Territory, an Indian is not permitted to drink. You drink in a saloon. A saloon is a bar. Ipso facto, an Indian is not admitted to the bar. And just in case somebody would ask too many questions, Judge Burkhardt holds his court in Mr. Fingal's saloon. But Jake can practice, and Burkhardt knows that Jake will tear him apart in court. He's not much of a lawyer. I wish you luck. That's very generous for a white man. You know, you might become a pretty good lawyer one day if you get that chip off your shoulder. I'm not a good Indian either. I stood by and let the whites steal my people blind. As a person, I like you. As a white man, I hate the stolen ground you walk on. <laughs> What tribe are you from, Mr. Solomon, Comanche or Cheyenne? The tribe of Levi. Jake's different. You look around, you'll find the world's full of different people. Thousand dollars for fifty good head? Is it a deal? It's a deal. I'll call a council meeting and firm it up. Or one thing, Fengal isn't gonna like it. He's trying to keep us out of court. He had his chance to sell his horses. He's got a partner named Jack Thorne. 
D. Jack Thorne. You used to be a Pinkerton man? Until they let him go for shooting first and asking questions later. Pretty rough boy. As long as you're aware of it, we'll be in touch. Good. This better be good. It's bad, Mr. Thorn. Jake Solomon's writing up his petition right now. You sure? He told me so when he picked up the forms. I reminded him of the money. He just looked at me and smiled. That man's got the nastiest smile. You sure he's got the money? Not yet, but he's going in. From where? Oh, that fellow, what's his name, Hawks? They come in trying to buy horses? He's made a deal for 50 engine ponies with our Indian lawyer. Well, why didn't you sell him what I he wanted? I tried to, but he wouldn't pay my price. Oh. Now, Jack, I can sell those horses to anybody $40, the way miners and homesteaders are coming in. So for a $1,000 difference, you set it up so Solomon can take the Indian's case into court. Well, he's not there yet. I figured we'd go and see him again and make another deal with him at his price. If you'd used your head in the first place, we wouldn't have to. Maybe he won't want to make a deal now. You better keep them out of court, Mr. Thorne. If they start waving that federal treaty around, Jake Solomon is the finest lawyer in the territory. He'll make us all look like fools. Well, you're the presiding officer. I give you what you pay for, but there has to be a legal loophole. And Jake Solomon doesn't leave loopholes. You better do something. You might as well forget about that you land. Yeah, yeah, we'll do something. Go on, get out of here, will you, Eddie? Yes, sir. Look, I'm sorry about all of this. I've done everything I can. <laughs> Seen better judges than that at a pie-eating contest. <clears throat> we better go and see Hobbs. Only... Only what? You look like a stubborn man. So am I. Uh... Writing a letter. You know, I wrote that once myself. I never mailed it because I forgot who it was to and I couldn't read my own writing. Will you be quiet? Yes, sir. Mr. Hawks. Angle. May we uh, speak to you for a moment? Come on in. Mr. Hawks. Mr. Worcester. May I present my partner, Mr. Jack Thorne? Jack Thorne? So you're Jack Thorne. I've sure heard a lot about you, Mr. Thorne. <laughs> no doubt. What can we do for you? Well, you can buy some horses from us. I guess we've already gone through that. They're $20 a head. You're a shrewd businessman, Mr. Hawks. Did you hear that, Bill? $20 a head. <laughs> I heard him, Charlie. Quite a sudden change, Fingal. Well, let's say that we just got in a new shipment of stock. I appreciate your offer, but I've already committed myself. To the Utes? That's right. That's a great mistake, Mr. Hawks. Is it? Why, they'll cheat you. They'll run in every cull and misfit on their so-called reservation. I'm not just saying that. It's true. I've never known an Indian yet that would go back on his word. May I? It's free. Well, you probably think that I'm just a land shark or something. Or maybe a crook. Well, I admit, Jack and I stand to make a lot of money. Once they open up this reservation, but so do a lot of other people. Ranchers, farmers, prospectors, maybe. That's treaty land, Fingal. What makes you think they'll open it up? I'll tell you why. Those Utes are sitting on 50 or 60,000 acres of fine grazing land. Some of it good farming land. Now, there's going to be a lot of important minerals under those hills somewhere. 
You know, there's a lot of land there for a few hundred Indians, mister. You know how to use it? They run a couple of hundred head of horses for their own personal use in the hunt. And that's it. They hunt. It's a big territory, but it's not that big. Every month, hundreds of people come to Pueblo looking for land. White people, Hawks, like you and me, they have to be turned away. Someday this whole country is going to blossom. It'll be crossed by good roads. I wouldn't be surprised if everybody even had his own private telegraph. I believe in our future, Mr. Hawks. All right, now, you picture that future that I've just spoken of, and right smack dab in the middle of it, maybe, maybe a hundred times repeated all over the country, you'll find a great big hunk of the finest land populated by the Redskins. Just hunting and thieving for a living. Or maybe you don't think that Injuns steal. Some of them, maybe. That's the old way. Things are changing. Not Indians. How about John Turnbull? Take the necktie off that red skin, you'll find war paint underneath. They don't change. I wouldn't argue with you, Mr. Thorne. No room for argument, Charlie. We're just guessing. You may be telling me the truth. I don't know. Maybe you think what you're doing is best for the country. Maybe not. But it's too late to do anything about our horses. I've already turned the money over to Turnbull. You did? Why, Bill! That was a bad mistake. I came here to buy horses, and I'll get mixed up in your local affairs. You wouldn't sell them to me at an honest price, but the youths would. Bill, what'd you... Shut up, Charlie. I don't suppose you've got any idea what you just started. Jack, now, don't you... I'll make my own decisions, T.J. When you get your horses, assuming you do get them, you take my advice and get back to your wagon train as fast as you can. You're not going to be very popular around Pueblo anymore. I'm not feeling too much like the queen of the mayor around here anyhow. Mm -hmm. you tell them that for? You know you got that money right there in your money belt. Because I don't like the way they do business, Charlie. What are you doing, buying horses or running an honesty school? Buying horses from the youths. Six, seven, eight, nine, one thousand. All right? We haven't got your horses yet. No, but you will have. You know, I've got kind of a soft spot in my heart for horse trading. Old Fingo comes around and offers me his horses at $15 a head. I wouldn't be able to resist him. Mr. Hawks, for a wise man, you are a very foolish one. <laughs> not that I object. I agree with Jake. I'm not exactly afraid of Jack Thorne, but I don't go out of my way to start anything with him. Let's say that I have a personal interest in this thing. If I hadn't rounded you up and brought you in eight years ago, you might have taken my scalp between now and then. Mr. Solomon, if I were you, I'd run that money over to Judge Burkhart before he thinks up a dodge it'll cost you a couple more hundred. I'm already halfway there. I... I don't like you. You're spoiling my faith in the perfidy of the white man. Those horses of yours aren't top-notch. You might get your faith back. Well, aren't you going to count it? Oh, no, Jake. I know it's all here. Uh, we have a pretty crowded schedule. Maybe it won't be so crowded after you talk to the Territorial Attorney General. Well, what's he got to do with it? I have a feeling he'll drop in to talk to you. Unless you hear our petition for an injunction, let's say, within four days. Jake, you know the spot I'm in. You think it's hot? Four days, Judge Burkhart. For the spot you are in now will seem like a trip to Iceland compared to the one you are going to be in. You know, I think it's getting warmer. I 
Judge, honey, if Jake Solomon gets into court with that petition of his, I won't stand a chance. I'll have to issue an injunction. So? It'll void the cultivation of the allotment ordinance. We'll be right back where we started from. Well, can't we beat the federal position? Something like, well, this wild, undeveloped Indian country being a menace to public health and safety. Something like that. Not even if it really was. Now, so far this week, 23 families of settlers have come to Pueblo, looked around, moved on up to Denver. Now, that's bad business. You're supposed to be a judge. You mean to tell me you can't have this case thrown out on some kind of technicality? Jake Solomon knows every technicality there is. I've been going over his petition ever since he filed it. And I can't even find a punctuation mark out of line. I knew I should have shot that up at the Indian the first time I saw him with a white collar on. Well, stall him then. I can't. If his case isn't called up within four days, he'll call in the territorial government and we'll all be through. Get out of here, Eddie. Mr. Pingle. Yeah, yeah, go on, get out. Old country moving west. And a couple of hundred frog-eating you standing right smack in the way. You know your trouble, T.J. You believe that muck. Of course I believe it. This whole reservation system is nonsense. Let the Indians get out and fight along with the rest of us. We've got no room for tribal cultures in America. Let them scratch for a living, along with you and me and the rest of us. Well, you'll have to take that up with Washington. I aim to do something about it right here. Now go on. Well, Burkhardt isn't much, but he's the only judge we own. So if Solomon's gonna cut him up in court, then he better not get to court. Now, Jack, you be careful. We're law-abiding citizens, you know. Come on, T.J. If we were such law-abiding citizens, we'd let the Indians keep their land, wouldn't we? Personally, I never did see the advantage of a bought judge anyhow. Case can always be appealed. Can't buy all the judges. Where are you going? I'm going to keep Mr. Solomon out of court. Billy, you better come with me. Why, Charlie? I just saw some mutes driving our horses in. That's good. If you think so, you better come and take a look at them. Come on. <laughs> Taking any chances. Always be sure that you are right. Then look it up again to be sure. We've got too much writing on this. You know what I'm gonna do after we win this case? Sure. You're gonna look around for another one. I already found another one. The Northern Cheyenne. The Army's put in an access road right through their best hunting territory. Oh, it used to be the best hunting territory. Three forts and a regiment of cavalry. You know what I like about it? Spotted Eagle and the whole Cheyenne Nation can't drive those soldiers out of there. But John Turnbull can. With this. Good. Not with guns and arrows, but with paper bullets. Then after the Cheyenne, maybe the Navajos, or the Nevada Piutes. But Indians are not the only ones who have legal troubles. They're the only ones who haven't been able to get any legal help up to now. And you are going to be the legal counsel for all American Indians. You bet I am. Well, Mr. Hawks. Ah, well, let's go, Turnbull. What are you talking about? You don't know, do you? Well, you're about to find out. Come on. <laughs> Solomon and the Indian 
the boat there? There, there, it's all set. Look at him. Skinny and broken down. I haven't had the craw to send horses like that to the glue factory. Still, I... Look at that old mare, Bill. I have seen better looking animals that destroyed out of kindness. <laughs> I bought 50 head of horses, Turnbull. Where are they? Don't blame the tribe. This is my fault. Well, it's somebody's fault. I'm a member of the tribal council, and when Fingal started putting the pressure on them, I told them to fight back any way they could. Now, if you people were out to swindle them, they should swindle every white man they have any dealings with. I guess I just forgot to have them make an exception in your case. <laughs> well, that's just fine. You know, you're no better than Fingal or Thorn or anybody else around here. You're making your people look like a bunch of horse thieves. We're fighting by your rules. Tell me, fight him, boy. Fight him back, but with paper bullets. Paper bullets. Best-hearted man who ever lived. Jake's dead. You better start planning your next move. There won't be any next move. You and make a lot of big talk about being an Indian. You're not acting like any Indian I ever fought. Jake's dead. They won't let me into court. Besides, Jake was a lawyer. You're a lawyer? Not like Jake. How do you think he got so good? By sending his cases to court with other people? Go ahead and talk. You wouldn't have any trouble. They make it easy for you. But they can rob us and kill us and starve us. There's nothing that we can do about it. I envy you. I wish I had one of those handy little hooks to hang all of my personal problems on like you have. Being an Indian has its advantages. What do you know about it? 
We're red men in a white man's world. We're outnumbered 10,000 to one. And every one of those 10,000 hands is against us. That's so. Well, Jake Solomon was one of those 10,000 to one, and so am I. John, I don't know too much about the law, but aren't you forgetting everything except this crooked little structure they've built up in this town? Why don't you contact the territorial government and turn this matter over to a federal judge? And bypass the court of original jurisdiction? You don't know anything about procedure. I know that you've learned too much of your law out of books, not enough out of people. Now you get up on your feet, John Turnbull. You're a lawyer, you're an Indian, you're a man. Why don't you start acting like one? Are you gonna contact Denver? You are. I'll never get a wire out of town. Finger alone's a telegraph operator. He doesn't own me. What can I do for you? Send this. I can't send that. You're making all kinds of charges against some of our leading citizens. Send a message, please. Well, I'm having a little trouble with the key, and I don't rightfully know whether it's this end of the line or maybe the wires are down somewhere. But, uh, well, anyhow, why don't you gents come back in a couple hours and the line... Uh, Send the message. So that you won't get the top of your head blown off, you ought to know that I understand Morse code. I'd be real unhappy if you so much as changed one word of that. to change. Why don't you run over and tell Thorne and Fingal about this? Oh, well, what would I do a thing like that for? I wonder. You sent that for him? Well, he had a gun on me, Mr. Thorne. Oh, why didn't you send a fake message or something? Well, he said he could understand code. Oh, yeah. Let it be, Jack. Go on back to your office, Mr. Hensel. Oh. You know that wire's gonna have the territorial attorney general down on us? Well, there's nothing much we can do about it, Jack. We should have covered ourselves better. Uh, Hawks. If he hadn't come busting in here taking the Indian side. But he did. Now, you might as well be philosophical about it. I'm not a philosopher, T.J. I told him he was going to make himself unpopular, and I'm going to show him what I meant. Oh, good. You go ahead and kill him, and that'll look just fine to the federal government. I got a lot of respect for the federal government. Confuse is easy. No, there's nothing that throws a government lawyer off the track quite like a nice, fat major general with his hands full of Indians. Well, we got plenty of Indians, but we don't have any nice, fat major general. You know, Fort Benton has. So? You know what we need around here? A neat little Indian war. Look at those hills, T.J. Look at all those pretty rocks. I see all those pretty rocks. There's a ute sitting on top of each one of them. And gold under each one of them. <laughs> Not on any I looked at. There's gold there. 
Is Burrow Beetle still around? Yeah, I think so. Let's tell him he's had a streak of good luck, TJ. Let's tell him he's just found gold. seen nothing like this. I ain't seen none for a long time, but I know what it looks like. He's right. That's gold, sure enough. That'll go six or seven hundred dollars a ton. That'll go a thousand dollars a ton. Where'd this come from? Well, I snuck over across the river. I did myself some sewing. That's reservation land. That's the promised land, and I'm going to get me a piece of it. Come on, boy. It's gold. There's oh, on over there. Won't be a man in town now. They'll all be across the river looking for gold. They're liable to be buried there. Yeah, then the army will move in. Your treaty will be broken. How's your case going to stand up in court then? I'm about ready to forget about your white man's court. This is Fingal's idea of not a court settlement. To start a war. Well, we better get it stopped before it gets started. Didn't you say that you were a member of the tribal council? But that doesn't mean I can stop trouble if Fingal starts it. So like I said before, John, I don't know too much about the law. But if the killings start and the army moves in, well, you just better stop it. TJ. I'll go along and make sure everything's all right. You going along with them? Well, you ought to have a guide. Without one, they might accidentally stumble on Indian territory. be sure there'll be trouble. But Fingal is hoping there will be, and it is up to us to prevent it. Our land is our land. We have the word of the chief of the horse soldiers. That is a good word. But now my youth brothers must show their patience. Do the searchers for yellow iron show patience? They're misled fools, chief. You and all of you must show your greater wisdom. We have lived in peace with men who have tried to take our land. Our son, Akani, has counseled us to peace. Some among us say the courts of the white man have justice only for the white man. Let us say now that the youth will not spill blood unless youth blood is spilled. Let us talk further on this. I say when the miners come, let them come. They're not here to claim land. They seek only for that which is not there. They will not find their yellow iron, and soon they will be gone. Can't do that. 
Now, why don't you two just uh, ride on out of here? We won't have any trouble. No. You go back. There ain't no Indian gonna tell me what to do. Come on. Enough. They'll be back here with the whole Ute Nation. You could have killed him, Mr. Thorne. I don't hold with killing. Wish they may be back at that. That'll be more of you people along. Might be a good idea, though, if you got yourselves up in those rocks somewhere, just in case. You going with us, Mr. Thorne? Now, you boys dig the gold. I'll, uh, I'll win it away from you back in town. Well, looks to me like we better get out there and build us a wall. We'll be picking youths out of our hair. How cunning are you, son? The words you speak come from a good heart. But the ways you have learned are not the ways of your people. non cane. If our nation is to live as a people, it must learn these ways. This much I have learned from the white man. He uses the law to fight us. We can use the same law to fight back. There are those who think this is a woman's way to fight. No one dies when the battle's fought in a court of law, Chief. Death comes to all things one day. <laughs> What's the matter? What happened? The white man came on our lands. When we tried to send them away, one of them struck Big Bull. One other shot him. A brother of your blood lies there, Connie. One who has lived the white man's law has done this to him. This is the law you would have us follow. Chief, men of bad heart have done this. They want you to break the treaty. We have not broken it, but it is broken. You fight these men, you'll lose your land. If we don't, we we'll lose our manhood. Akani, who are your people? White man, you have one hour to leave the lands of my people. And you can tell Fingo that's one hour more than any other white man will get. John, you know what you've just done? Certainly, I've taken a bath, and I got rid of an awful lot of dirt. What's happening here? Mr. Pickle has no idea I will. Well, then get in the youth side of it. Tell them we don't really need soldiers. We need a little law here in a hurry. What are you going to do? I don't know, but I'll be making a lot of noise while I'm doing it. Now get going. Yes, sir. trouble horses can cause sometimes. It's not that the horses have been causing trouble around here lately. But you did the wrong thing. I wanted you to stay on that horse, not get off it. 
Take that gun off, Thorne, and I'll be happy to settle our differences that way. But I'm not going to fight you with guns. That's the trouble with the reputation. Most folks too yellow to try me. Like you. There's a difference between being yellow and using good sense. Well, in your case, it won't make any difference. Not that you could cause any more trouble. The army will take care of your youth friends. And if I wasn't a vengeful man, I'd probably leave you alone. But I am a vengeful man, Mr. Hawks. And you've caused me a great deal of inconvenience. It's now three o'clock. I'll be around about six to kill you. Afternoon. Like you cashed in on it real quick. Well, you want a drink? Yes, sir. I'd be mighty proud to have a drink with you. Oh, sit down. Here, drink all you want. <coughs> Say, you ever know what happened to Clementine? No, what? Well, that was my wife's name. Anybody find anything? Ain't had time yet. Well, let's get this done and start looking a little harder. You just ain't looking in the right place, Hank. We should do it now before the army comes. Your brother's gather soon. Soon enough to die. When have your people been afraid to die? What time is it? Go on five. Take it easy, T.J. Well, I'm different than you. I've got a conscience and a worry. Well, it's bad for the digestion. I only wish we didn't have to do it this way. What's the difference whether we do it this way or we cheat them out of their land legally? The end's the same. Well, my way, nobody would have gotten hurt. Who, oh, the Indians or the miners? Nobody. What would you think would happen to the Utes without any reservations? You remember what happened to the California Indians? The Paiutes and the Mandans? Take away their lands, they die. Wake up, T.J. All I want is to see this country grow. <laughs> Whose country? Jack. Come here, look. I thought I told you to take care of Beetle. I gave him a case of whiskey and sent him out of town. Oh, oh, Should have knocked him on the head. Don't you call me anything, Clinty. Jack! That drunk! Good. I won't feel it so much. You're right, Billy boy. I deserve more than a case of whiskey. You sure do, donkey old partner. Thor, I got a pick with you. I mean, I got a bone to pick with you, ain't I, Billy? That's right, donkey old partner. Well, you better pick it fast, old man. Look, boys, go on, get out of here. Go sober before somebody gets hurt. I've already been hurt. 
Ain't a bit of it. Sure you have, donkey. You know, old donkey, he get locked up for spreading those false gold discovery rumors. We don't know anything about any false discover of gold. You what? Sure, yeah. You know, old donkey told me all about you. You know something funny? If one of them miners gets hurt by one of them mutes, the miners are going to come back. They're going to be real mad. And they're going to be looking for you, too. You, too, Mr. Thornton. Maybe I didn't treat you right, bro. <laughs> I hope to tell you you did. One lousy case of whiskey. Well, now, you, uh, you didn't tell anybody else about this, did you? Except Hawks here. Well, yes, I did. But old Billy, he told me that if you don't come through with some money, I ought to start yelling everywhere. There ain't no gold here. Jack thought he paid me to say there was. That's a pretty good yell, ain't it? Yeah, that's a fine yell, old man. Too bad you're not gonna be able to use it. Hold it, Thorn. You can't shoot twice while I shoot once. Jack, please don't! Stay right where you are. Drop it, Thorn. Jack, do as he says, please! A little late in life to start giving up easy, isn't it, TJ? You shoot first, you'll hit your partner, and I'll get you next. Maybe. You, know, you ought to have that Indian lawyer friend of yours around. Seems to me I remember that uh, the surviving partner inherits the whole shebang in case the other one dies. Is that right, TJ? You're not that fast, Thorn. One way to find out. <laughs> Please. Now, well, as soon as we get back from the Ute Reservation. Come on. You too, donkey. I'm waiting for you, Billy. Well, there they are. Now, just don't get shook up. Hold your fire till they get down to the bottom of that gully. And everybody fired once. <coughs> Big Ed and his brothers are ready. Are you ready, Akani? I am ready. Akani! Look! <laughs> John Turnbull! Dockery! Come down and talk! Dockery! Ask John Turnbull if I can be trusted! Can he be trusted? He is a white man. Can he be trusted? He can be trusted. No gold, that's all. Jack Thor gave me ore he found up around Virginia City. Paid me with a case of whiskey to tell him that I found it here. You call yourselves miners. Why, any tenderfoot would know there ain't no gold in them rocks. Is that on the square, Mr. Fingal? That's right. That lines up with what Mr. Worcester told me, Mr. Hawks. Nevertheless, these people are trespassing on our lands. John, a lot of good that law school did you if the only way you think you can get them off is to shoot them off. I told you about the local courts. I dropped off a team of investigators from the Attorney General's office, Mr. Turnbull. Whatever may have been wrong with your courts before, there'll be nothing wrong with them now. My wire, Big Bull, lies in his lodge with a white man's blood near his heart. Men try to take our lands and drive us off. Nakane's people have many grievances. 
Chief, that's why your brother John Turnbull's here. If you have any grievances, take him to court, like any American. There is an alternative, if you insist. Over that ridge are two troops of cavalry. They're here to see that these miners vacate treaty lands immediately. They can also be used to protect them if it comes to that. If you think to frighten me, non cane. If I'm going to be your lawyer, you must listen to me. Come on, let's talk. Colonel, looks like you better nail down the whole territory. By the time John Turnbull gets through, the youths will own the whole shebang again. And legally. John, I want to thank your people for sending those five braves along with us. Oh, that was just in case a tribe of white renegades tried to steal your horses. Bill! Bill, Johnny! You know them old plugs that you try to sell us? Sure. Somebody's trying to buy them. Come on and see who. Come on. Trying to tell me those crow baits are the only horses available? Well, what about those horses in that corral over there? Hey! I tell you, I need some horses. Well, those horses are spoken for, mister. Yeah. Uh, where you been? I was beginning to think something happened to you. It did. Those horses are ours. That's right. Well, then why'd that thieving Indian try to sell me these four-footed disasters? Oh, it takes a little time for the word to get around. I heard about the trouble with the Utes. Well, there was no trouble with the Utes. Well, it might be yet. Where's my bill of sale? Ah, that's the trouble with you foreigners. You're too suspicious. <laughs> well, it looks all right. Maybe you didn't read the fine print. Thanks, Bill. You got nothing to thank me for, John. Of course, I might be needing a lawyer one of these days real soon. Just in case some of those helpers of yours decide to run off with a few of our horses. And if they do, I'll be fixing to sue the whole Ute nation. I object. Your allegation is based on hearsay, which is not admissible as evidence. Objection is sustained. Mr. Shannon, Mr. Wooster? Yeah. Looks like we got our horses. Let's move Let's on. go. Let's go. See you around, John. Bye, John.